This is Hollywood. Matthias Bombell with you. From Bleecker Street Media comes Danny Collins, a fictional story about a successful singer in the vein of Neil Diamond, played by Al Pacino. In a short period prologue, we see that the young singer, Danny Collins, is interviewed for a Rolling Stone-type magazine. He reveals there that he is inspired by John Lennon. Flash forward to the present where it is established that Collins has become a great success. We see his high-living lifestyle at a surprise birthday party, where his manager, played by Christopher Plummer, brings him a life-changing gift. He wrote you a letter. What the hell are you talking about? John Lennon wrote you a letter, pal, in 1971. He sent it to you, care of this Deloach guy. Now, Deloach smells money, so he holds on to it. Never tells you. Then Deloach dies. But he's not the point. The point is, he sold that letter to a collector. A collector who, in turn, sold it to Plummer, which he presents to Pacino in that scene. It becomes a life-changing catalyst for Danny Collins, for the contents of the letter from Lennon offer encouragement and advice to remain himself, even to call him on his private telephone for a visit. This affects Collins deeply, and he looks to make a change in his life by heading to New Jersey, where he holds up in a small hotel managed by Annette Benning, who has looked at some new lyrics he's written and offers an opinion. Ah, oh, come in! It's a, it's an unbolty thing. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so, I got your note. Yeah? So? What do you think? Well, okay. Okay. Pictures from my life as I'm walking down the hall. As I'm walking by, I collect them all. What do you think? Well, you, you're aware that I have no basis in musical knowledge or theory. Okay. Okay, yeah. so you still want my opinion? Of course. Well, I I think I kind of liked it better the way it was with the leaves. Really? Yeah, yeah the leaves and, yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get you back in my room again. No. So now I can ask you out to dinner. Al will have to keep working on that as Annette does not give in easily. We discover that Mr. Collins has an estranged son, played by Bobby Cannavale, who lives near the hotel in New Jersey, and that he has a wife, played by Jennifer Garner, a little girl, and one more on the way. Danny tries hard to right past wrongs. You heard of the New Compass School in Manhattan? What? It's the most progressive private school in the country. It's got... Uh a multimodal approach toward treating children with learning issues, particularly ADHD. I pull some strings, and you have an interview in two hours. And have a shower! I know, you go in there, it doesn't work. Wait a second, do you really think that we haven't looked into every school there is? Not this one. How do you know that? Well, you know, they can't afford it. Stephen, would you mind your own? Business, I'm please. Sorry, excuse me. You, you mean that we have an interview as our family today in two hours at the New Compass School? People wait two years for such an interview. Two years. You have it in two hours. Just give me a day to do something good for you. And then, you know, I'm gone forever. And uh, you still go to heaven because you're so damn tolerant. And I will still go to hell because, you know, you can't buy redemption. Everybody wins. Actually, everybody 
in the audience does win with this outstanding movie, which I feel is the best new release that I've seen up to this point in the new year. The cast alone is fantastic, and there are some very fine performances from them. The dialogue is very well written, and the idea of the movie itself is quite intriguing. This is terrific work from a first-time director, Dan Fogelman, who spoke with the MAB Studios about where the story idea came from. So basically, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the internet, and the story just kind of hits me, and I say, wow, what a missed opportunity. A guy, a musician, receives a letter from John Lennon that he should have received four decades earlier. And I couldn't stop thinking about the story, and so I tracked down the guy and found out what had happened to him. In real life, he was a small folk musician with a successful fan base, and he remained that very much throughout his life. He's a great guy. He's continued making music. He supported himself musically. Um, he never quote unquote sold out. He stayed true to himself as the letter would have advised him to. And when I talked to him about it, I said, you know, what would have happened if you had received the letter much earlier? And he realized probably not much in his life would have changed other than he would have gotten to meet his hero, John Lennon. Uh, but I couldn't stop thinking about what would have happened to the version of a guy who had gotten very famous and had gotten very wealthy and had gotten very unhappy and what would have happened if he had received that letter that could have changed everything. And that became basically the impetus for the film. I'm so glad the impetus followed through to the outstanding result of this feature, which is one not to miss. I can't remember such a satisfying movie on so many levels reaching the screen in the past year. I urge you to enjoy Danny Collins. I think you may like it as much as I did. The Motion Picture Association of America has given this an R rating. This is your pal, Matthias Bombal, bidding you a fond farewell.